Hi everyone, Andy here again, and I'm back with the Sony F55. In the last video, we went over how the uh, camera all fits together, and now I wanna go through the menu system, both the side panel here, as well as the deeper menus of the camera. So let's dive right in and look at the side menu first. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the white balance. So as you can see from the outside of this setting of this uh, display here, I have multiple buttons, which can control the individual menu items here. So if I click on this button, it's the white balance menu. I can choose between various preset white balances, 3200, 4300, 5600, 5500 that is. And I go to memory here and I can actually dial in a white balance based on whatever my scene is. Now, there's no auto white balance on the outside of the camera just yet. Future firmware will enable this. And I can then essentially then just run an auto white balance maybe off of one of these assignable buttons here. But for now, I can dial it in here and then I have to go into the menus further to, to run an auto white balance. That's just the way that it is currently in the current firmware. Next to that, I have shutter, which allows me to step through various preset shutter values, which in the step mode does that, and continuously adjust if I want to through small increments. This is often called like synchro scan, other modes like that. Also in the menus, I can change this to degrees if I want. Uh, next to that, I have the S and Q button, which is your slow and fast motion or a frame rate change mode. I've turned that on. I can step through incrementally between 1 and 60 frames right now. And again, in the future firmware, we'll see this uh, go up even higher in, in, in HD mode or 2K mode on this camera. Uh, but that's, again, in the future. Uh, and then down here, I have a gamma button. Let's me go between standard gammas, hyper gammas, and S-log. I have six standard gammas, uh, eight hyper gammas, and S-log here. A hyper gamma is sort of like a, a soft S-log, where S-log 2 is the sort of standard S-log. Now, you'll notice as I go between these different modes, my base ISO seems to shift around. My, this is my ISO level there, and that's because uh, the middle gray value actually determines sort of where the ISO of the camera is, at least in Sony's eyes. So, um, so in S-log 2, the base ISO is 1250. That's the lowest ISO on the 55. But I can go all up to 10,000 ISO if I want to. So a little, little crazy there. But you'll notice it will shift as I move between gammas based on where the middle gray is perceived to be. So that's that there. And there, right now, this, this last block is blocked out or it's not available because it's where, it, this is where I use a monitor LUT. I can change between multiple monitor LUTs. That's for when you're shooting with the CDEI mode, which I'll show you a little bit later as well. Next to this, we have a camera button, file button, audio and time code button, and view button. Right now, the camera button gets you back to this main page here. File button does nothing, and audio time button button do nothing. These are two future buttons that will do some things for us that are just not enabled yet. Audio and time code let you uh, like essentially adjust the audio levels and, and time code input, which is right here on the screen. And the view button, though, does work, which allows you to go into uh, playback viewing mode, etc., thumbnail viewing mode right here. And I can, again, use these buttons to move between thumbnail view, etc. When I'm done, I get back to camera again, and I'm here. So, uh, as you saw there, I have a lot of options here. Also here listed is my resolution, my frame rate, my format, audio levels, battery level, time code, all kind of good stuff right in there. So handy little options, but not totally implemented just yet. I really want them to dig even further and allow you even, even more access to the menus through this side panel. Everything beyond this at the moment is in the full menu, which I can access from here, this menu button. All right, now we've seen the uh, side panel display. Let's go into the main menu, which will display on the viewfinder as well as an SDI output if I set it to do so. Uh, I have a display here off screen for uh, viewing purposes. Uh, you may need that as well because the menus only display here, especially in the OLED. You may not want to look in there to see that. So uh, I'll go ahead and turn it on here and you will see a variety of menu items. But the first one I'm going to go to is system. System settings are in here which allow me to do some key functionality in the camera. So the first one I'm gonna look at uh, is this, uh, this uh, thing called system settings frequency. This is your frame rate choices, right? We have 2398, 2997, 25, 50, and 59.94. Those, those are our frequencies right now, our frame rates right now. 24P will be enabled in a future upgrade, as well as higher frame rates in the future. So uh, that's what's there. Next big thing here is base settings. And this is where you're gonna choose if the camera's in uh, the custom mode, which is basically the video mode of the camera for traditional video recording, painting the camera, etc., and also Cine EI mode. Cine EI mode is the cinema exposure index mode, which enables the RAW recorder to work. So to get into RAW, you have to be in Cine EI. If I turn that on, 
it will enable the raw recorder. This is a nice option to have. And also it will lock out most of the key functionality on the side of the, of the menus for traditional video work. So you have a fixed ISO, only preset uh, exposure index modes, things like that. Uh, no preset uh, uh, white balances as well. Uh, so uh, this is a, a big thing. I can turn it on here. When I do so, uh, it will also enable uh, monitor LUTs on the output of my camera. Monitor LUTs uh, will enable me to view the sort of material that I'm recording on a, on a, with, a, with a look on it uh, and record that look to SYS. So I can do both raw and SYS recording at the same time with the SYS having this lookup table sort of baked into it. The SYS card uh, will take that look in 1080, let's say, uh, in XAVC or MPEG-2, and I can have a nice offline edit at the same time I record that raw data. Additionally, the SDI outputs will have that look on it as well if I choose to. So that's the monitor lets are enabled then, which is that, that far menu down there. Um, and by the way, also here, you see the main operation now is listed as raw, and the color space is S gamut. That's the full color space of the, of the camera in 55. And then down below here, I have, if we go down all the way down, to uh, another menu when this is on. I can go to this AXS recorder menu, which is this, this is the AXS recorder. Go in here, and I have things like my camera ID, I can set my file naming conventions, etc. in here. But mainly what matters to me is that I can also make sure that my, my S by S clips and my uh, raw, clips, raw clips are named the same thing. So I can turn that on with this link menu. So that's an important thing to consider as well. Uh, the, the, raw, the S by S clips right now are labeled simply clip 0001, 002, whatever, onwards. So there's no naming conventions just yet enabled for S by S clip naming. Uh, so that's that there. Uh, but back, back to the base settings, if I don't want to record in RAW, I want to just record in standard video, I can do so going back to custom, which I'll go ahead and do, execute. Uh, and then when that's enabled, I, might, I have a couple main operation choices as well, which is YPBPR or RGB. RGB enables 444 output via two SDIs on the camera, or, and YPBPR is a 422 output, strictly speaking. So uh, that's the big difference there. Uh, and then finally, color space here, I can be either in S gamut or normal mode. Normal is essentially the sort of standard Rec. 709-ish gamut of the camera, where S gamut gives you the full uh, camera, the color gamut the camera can accept or can, can produce. On the 55 and the 5, this is both there. The 55 actually has more colors than the 5, but uh, you can enable on either camera. So go back from there. That's what we have. Next up is record format, and that's where you're going to choose between, in the video modes anyway, your uh, MPEG-2, 50 megabit 422 format, MPEG, that's what the bottom one is, XAVC, 1920 by 1080 mode, right? That's your standard XAVC HD mode. Uh, and then XAVC, 4096 by 2160. This is a 4K video mode you can choose in the camera. This is only on the 55 that you have this option. If I turn this on, it'll essentially and uh, allow me to record in 4K, right? Right inside on SYS cards. You can't record uh, 4K video at the same time as the 4K raw data. Uh, it's sort of either or. If you're recording raw, then only HD goes to the cards and you have the 4K raw data. If you're going for traditional 4K video, then your raw recorder is not working. So it's one or the other. All right, so I'll leave it in 4K now. And the rest of the things in here, Assignable buttons, fan controls, clock sets, hour meters, stuff you may use or maybe not, you know. So that's the key things that are in there. Let's go up to uh, the top, very top, though, and start from there and go down. Camera settings are here in the camera menu. We have things like white balance settings, right? So that's, this is the one I'll check out really quick. The rest of the things in here, shutter, black balance, flare adjustments, gain adjustments, those are fairly standard. But the white menu, I want to show you one thing really quick, which is you can... Here you can switch between the presets like we could do on the side of the camera, choose memory, and then I can run the white balance from here. This is, this is where you run the auto white balance. And then I can dial in my temperature just like I could on the outside of the camera. And also what I really like about this camera is they've added this thing called color temperature balance uh, menu right here. This is a magenta green shift option in the camera. Very important to have. Great option there. I can essentially just uh, uh, remove or add that, uh, that the level here, which will change the green, the green magenta balance. I can also independently change the red and green gains, which will affect my, my, my Kelvin temperature. So this is a really great option to have. I'm glad it's here. 
Uh, I can't wait for them to get the auto white balance outside on the camera, but uh, either way, you can do a lot of things in white here, so it's very important. Uh, the rest of it, we can mostly access from the outside of the camera. Paint menus, though, very important to have. This camera is a full paint menu uh, where you can choose all your gammas. Uh, you can also do matrix manipulation, saturation changes, multi-matrix, it's all there. You can dial in a lot of cool things on this camera very easily in the paint menu. And of course, Able Cine will make scene files. We make these scene files that you can then load into the camera and have your camera looking different, right? So that's all through paint. Audio, uh, in the last video, if you recall, the audio, uh, the audio inputs on the side, of this far side of the camera. But right now, there's no way to adjust audio on the outside of the camera in terms of levels, right? There's a button that's going to be enabled on the side of the camera, just not working just yet in the current build. Uh, you know, so to change the audio levels, I have to actually go in this menu and go to audio level adjustment. Now, again, this will change in the future firmware. If you really want it, remind, you know, let, let Sony know that you want that and they'll get it in sooner rather than later. Uh, video output menu, I want to dig in here a little bit. There are four SDI outputs on the side of this camera. Uh, two of them are labeled main, two are labeled sub, and there's one HDMI as well. So four SDIs and one HDMI. When I go in here, I can choose to turn on and off the sub, the sub outputs, the sub outputs are the, the bottom outputs. I can also turn on and off HDMI. Output format, I can go uh, and, and set my SDI outputs uh, between anywhere between HD and up to 4K. Now, and this is on the 55 only, but I can turn on 4096 by 2160, that's 4K, on the output. If I do that, it will essentially dis use all four SDI connectors. But now I can no longer, now, now I no longer have any other SDIs available, but I do have an HDMI available uh, here as well. So I have one HDMI in 1080 and 4K video. If I want to, I can also have 4K HDMI. If I click on this button here, it makes the, makes the HDMI 4K out, but now I have no SDI outputs, so that's a little, it's a little, a little frustrating. Do that like that's how you make HDMI 4K, but no SDIs are enabled. Um, or in the case of 4K, I can send out on the main outputs a 2K signal and then have HD, regular HD on the, re the sub SDIs and the HDMI. I know, very confusing. Basically, I have a lot of combinations. Come to this menu, play with it. If you get the hold of the camera, you'll see out some outputs will be HD, some can be 2K, some can be 4K, blah, blah, blah. Lots of, lots of options here. Okay, so let's leave that menu uh, and go to uh, go a little further down the rabbit hole here uh, and back out again. Um, output settings, this is where I can turn uh, when I'm re recording in 4K, will it, will, how will the HD look, will it be cropped, etc. Monitor LUTs, if I was using the Cine EI mode, this is how I can turn on the monitor LUT or off. And output display chooses if you're going to put characters on the screen or not, or the menu items. Right now, my, uh, my sub output has characters on it. I'm recording that right now for you guys. All right, so let's go back. Uh, viewfinder, quick, easy stuff here. Zebras, peaking, etc. they're all there. Uh, time code menus where you can, you can set your time code, drop frame, non-drop frame, jam it, etc. There's no time code button on the side of the camera just yet, but there will be in the future. Recording. Now, we've seen the recording format thing already in the camera. This recording menu is just strictly to set the, uh, the um, a proxy recording option that's available in the 55. Uh, in the 55, I can actually set uh, the S by S card to record 4K video, and simultaneously on the same S by S card, I can record in 50 megabit 422 video. So if I want to record 4K video, but I'm not really sure my editor can handle it, I can simultaneously record uh, MPEG-2 50 megabit, basically standard HD. If I want to do that, I can do so just by going in this menu and enabling MPEG-2 proxy. Turn that on, dual recordings at the same time. They'll be in different folders on the card, but voila, there it is. That's up to 30p, you can do that. Pretty, pretty cool option to have. The rest of things in here are just for uh, SDI record control, like triggering, external re recorders, etc. It's all there. Media, which is, this is the, uh, this is where I can save and I can format my S by S cards, things like that. File, it enables me to do things like loading scene files in and out, lens files in and out, very important for the able scene files, for instance. Maintenance has some, some just uh, low-end stuff like tests off for calibration and camera configuration for using a paint box. This camera does work with the paint box via the remote port on the side of the camera. You can paint things like RGB gains, things like that, so very nice. Now we're back to the system again. So that's sort of the really quick rundown of what's in the camera settings. 
you know, the tricky things there are the custom modes and the output options, but there's a lot going on here already functional in the current build. Of course, there's lots of little firmware things that are coming along the way. Let us know what you want to come first. We can pass that on to Sony. Uh, they're constantly adding things along the way through this year. There'll be lots of little upgrades going on and on. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.